Thank you, Mr. Barra. The chair recognizes Mr. Olson for five minutes. I thank the chair and a big Texas welcome to our four expert witnesses. Um, I want to talk about going back to the moon. I had the honor to spend a whole day with the most recent American to walk on the moon, Captain Gene Cernan. He's back home in Texas 22 for a couple, a better part of a day, just drive around, talk to kids about getting excited about NASA and space. Uh, the, our discussions were overshadowed by the Obama administration's cancellation of the, of the uh, Constellation project, the one that's take, supposed to take us back to the moon under George W. Bush. Uh, that was sort of shaking the whole environment down there. But Captain Cerner was very adamant about going to the moon. He said, that's the best place to go to prepare for going to Mars. He's pointed out that we've only spent 300 hours on the moon, not even a little over a week. 12 Americans, not a whole lot of presents, six places we actually landed upon. We've missed a lot of the whole moon. He also said, we don't know what we don't know about the moon. He pointed out, for example, that 37 years after he walked on the moon, we found out, hey, there's water on the moon in those craters. And as you guys know, going to Mars or going in deep space, we have to have water for human beings to survive. So that's great project. My question is for you, Dr. Zerbichin. Uh, you mentioned uh, we can discover things on the moon to help us go to Mars. As I mentioned, Colonel C Captain Cerner agrees with you. Can you go further detail on this topic? How can we help us learn more about moon that gets us to Mars quickly? That's a really important question that you're asking, a question that we're thinking about, both from the science uh, side, but also from the human and technological side. Uh, there's a fundamental difference about being in low Earth orbit and being away from the Earth, and that has to do with the radiation environment that's out there. Uh, the radiation environment, of course, is much less in uh, low Earth orbit because of the fact that we have a magnetic field that, that missed the kind of pulls away, directs away particles that come in from deep space. Uh, that radiation environment, living in that environment for longer duration is something that is existential to go to Mars, but it's something we're going to learn uh, being uh, near the moon, uh, on the surface of the moon for a long time. We want to learn about resources like you uh, uh, talk about. U ultimately, what we l want to learn is actually live off the land, if you want, uh, relative to yeah. other resources that are there, whether it's uh, uh, the water that there, uh, some of uh, resources that may actually lead to companies or, or kind of uh, commerce in, in other ways. That is a positive thing. It's something that we should think about We've, that has guided us. We would not sit in the United States here as this uh, country we love uh, if uh, the, the people ahead of us did not think that way. So it's about learning uh, how to do that, also to develop the technologies to sustain life uh, in deep space. And as you mentioned too, having access to water out of our orbit is huge because with our current propulsion systems, it takes 10 pounds of propellant to put up one pound of water into orbit. So that means you have to have a huge rocket pulling all that water out of our out of Earth going through our atmosphere, if it's there on the moon, it's there for the taking. And uh, I think that's something we should push and get in there in five years is very, very doable if we make a commitment. Another question for you, Doctor, is about uh, the President's budget request for science. It's a decrease from the FY19 appropriation, but still the highest ever proposed by administration. It's increased again. The President had an amendment there, he put on another $90 million. What does NASA plan on doing with that extra $90 million, and how does that differ from the existing Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative? I'm really glad for that question because it relates directly to what we just discussed. What we seek to do ahead of a human landing is actually bring uh, robotic mobility, so a rower to the south areas, the polar areas, uh, off the moon and actually look for water and the state it's in, just in a way as uh, Dr. Sykes talked about in his testimony. That's what the, what the, the additional uh, $90 million allows us to buy that uh, services to go over there and accelerate going there ahead of humans going to that very region. I have a few more questions, but not much time, so I'll yield back the balance of my time.